Chapter 3 has arrived, and with it comes an entirely new map to explore. There are some old returning favorites like Tilted Towers, Shifty Shafts, and Greasy Groves. There's also a ton of new POIs like Sleepy Sounds, Condo Canyon, and The Daily Bugle. Now everyone knows the POIs, but what about the characteristics of the map, and what should we expect throughout the competitive season for Chapter 3 Season 1? Let's dive into some of the new changes and effects it has on competitive play. The first change that will seriously impact the way that competitive games are played out is the large abundance of environmental heals that are now available on the map. Previously, in Chapter 2, a lot of the slurp barrels were mainly located at slurpy swamps, with of course some others being thinly spread across the map in small amounts. But now, in Chapter 3 Season 1, there are 87 slurp barrels distributed rather evenly across the map. Similarly, there are also 171 produce boxes spread relatively evenly throughout the map as well, so now a lot more players and teams will get access to not only the free shield in these, but also the peppers for enhanced movement speed. Last chapter, all the pepper spawns are basically limited to one POI, catty corners, but now the majority of named POIs have access to these outside of Rocky Reels. Sorry, Rocky Reels. Teams like Janus and Vortex, who play second in the first cash cup of the season, heavily utilize this in their early game strategy. They land to the south side of Sleepy Sound, and on their individual looting paths, both has access to shield barrels and produce boxes, meaning they can essentially make the most out of the 20 chests they have there as they barely need to use any shield that they loot. Vortex uses 7 shield barrels to the west side alongside the shield mushrooms obtained from the produce boxes to get himself all the way up to 200 HP. Janus lands on the east side and pops 2 minis, then grabs the 3 slurp barrels and produce boxes to the north. You might think it's a waste, since he could have just used the same shield barrels as Vortex, but landing more split enables them to loot the entire place faster, disengage quicker, finding plenty of minis along the way anyway, so it won't necessarily matter. As you can see, as they leave their POI, they are not struggling for shield one little bit, unlike many of the other teams in the lobby. You know, Reese, while we're on the topic of heals, we have to talk about the new coolers. These trusty new resources provide three different variations of loot. You can get four chug splashes, two guzzle juices, or two chug splashes and one guzzle juice. We've already seen this become a huge staple in competitive play. For example, Booga and Skittles drop in Chonker Speedway that has 17 cooler spawns, and when they leave this drop spot, they often have 18 chug splashes split across both of their inventories. This totals to 720 HP that can be healed if utilized effectively. With the cars already equipped here in Chonker Speedway with those nice off-road tires, they have that ease of mobility around the map. With this additional mobility and all of the chug splashes from the cooler boxes, this allows them to spend much more time looting in zone for ammo and better weapons. The issue with this strategy though, is that it requires you to take a mid-game fight for your surge damage. But for a team like Fuga and Skittles, that's something they're very confident in. Overall, this is a very unconventional but successful early game strategy they've been implementing. Last but not least, we have probably the most impactful addition to the map, and that is the spider webs. These webs provide you with mythic Spider-Man web shooters, an easy rotational tool using the webs, and additional heals. Having these provide numerous benefits in the early game like easy shield and fast mobility. Now these webs can be really useful in the early game for faster looting, but can be a double-edged sword in the end game. In this game, the first moving zone pulls from south of Daily Bugle to the northwest, which means there are a large amount of obstacles in players' way. Shady and Waze have boxed up next to one of these webs, meaning when the zones start to pull, they can leave their box and get an easy rotation from low ground without the use of a launch pad, and also saving them a ton of material. However, if you're not watching each turn in a messy endgame, you could easily bounce off of one of these and be sent into the zone, or even worse, into Taysen's line of sight. With these incredible additions to the map, plus some old favorites returning, we can't wait to see you all in action when FNCS returns in February. Until next time, we'll see you on the Battle Bus. Beep beep! <laughs>